Hey, Motley Patriot here. In the words of James Madison, I was spoiled to all other sermons upon hearing this man preach. Today we're going to speak of Reverend Waddell, James Waddell. And here's a first person account of someone who had witnessed his sermons. It was one Sunday as I traveled through the country of Orange County, Virginia, that my eye was caught by a cluster of horses tied near a ruinous old wooden house in the forest, not far from the roadside. Having frequently seen such objects before and traveling through those states, I had no difficulty in understanding that this was a place of religious worship. Devotion alone should have stopped me to join the duties of the congregation, but I must confess that curiosity to hear the preacher of such a wilderness was not the least of my motives. On entering, I was struck with his preternatural appearance. He was tall and very spare old man. His head, which was covered with a white linen cap, his shriveled hands and his voice were all shaking on the, under the influence of palsy. And a few moments ascertained to me that he was perfectly blind. The first emotions that touched my breast were those of mingled pity and veneration. But how soon were all of my feelings changed? The lips of Plato were never more worthy of a prognostic swarm of bees. Then were the lips of this holy man. It was a day of the administration of the sacrament, and his subject was, of course, the passion of our Savior. I have heard the subject handled a thousand times. I had thought it exhausted long ago. Little did I suppose that in the wild woods of America, I was to meet with a man whose eloquence would give to this topic a new and more sublime pathos than I had ever before witnessed. As he descended from the pulpit to distribute the mystic symbols, there was a peculiar, a more than human solemnity in his air and manner, which made my blood run cold and my whole frame shiver. He then drew a picture of the suffering of our Savior, his trial before Pilate, his ascent up Calvary, his crucifixion, and his death. I knew the whole history, but never until then had I heard the circumstances so selected, so arranged, and so colored. It was all new, and I seemed to have heard it for the first time in my life. His enunciation was so deliberate that his voice trembled on every syllable, and every heart in the assembly trembled in unison. His peculiar phrases had the force of description that the original scene appeared to be at that moment acting before our eyes. We saw the very faces of the Jews, the staring, frightful distortions of malice and rage. We saw the buffet, my soul kindled with a flame of indignation, and my hands were on involuntarily and con convulsively clenched. next page but when he came to touch on the patience the forgiving meekness of our savior when he drew to the life his blessed eyes and streaming in tears to heavens his voice breathing to god a soft gentle prayer of pardon on his enemies father forgive them for they know not what they do the voice of the preacher which had all along faltered grew fainter and fainter until his utterance being entirely obstructed by the force of his feelings. He raised his handkerchief to his eyes and burst into a loud and irrepressible flood of grief. The effect is inconceivable. The whole house resounded with the mingled groans and sobs and shrieks of the congregation. It was some time before the tumult had subsided, so far as to permit him to proceed. Indeed, Judging by the usual but fallacious standard of my own weakness, I began a very uneasy for the situation of the preacher. For I could not conceive how he would be able to let his audience down from the heights to which he had wound them without impairing the solemnity and dignity of the subject, or perhaps shocking them by the abruptness of the fall. But no, the descent was as beautiful and sublime as the elevation had been rapid and enthusiastic. The first sentence with which he broke the awful silence was a quotation from Rousseau, 
Socrates died like a philosopher, but Jesus Christ like a God. I despair of giving you any idea of the effect produced by this short sentence, unless you could perfectly conceive the whole manner of the man as well as a peculiar crisis in the discourse. Never before did I completely understand, but what, oh, here's a good one, uh, Demosthenes meant by laying such stress on delivery, you are to bring before you the venerable figure of the preacher, his blindness, constantly recalling to you, to your relection, recollections, old Homer, Ossian, and Milton, and associating with his performance, the melancholy grandeur of their geniuses. You are to imagine that you hear his slow, solemn, well-accented enunciation and his voice of affecting, trembling melody. You are to remember the pitch of passion and enthusiasm to which the congregation were raised. And then the few moments of portentous, death-like silence which reigned throughout the house the preacher removing his white handkerchief from his aged face, even yet wet with the recent torrents of tears, and slowly stretching forth the palsied hands which hold it, begins the sentence, Socrates died like a philosopher, and pausing, raising the other hand, pressing them both, clasped together with warmth and energy to his breast, living his sightless balls to heaven and pouring his whole soul into the tremendous, tumult, tremulous voice. But Jesus Christ died like a God. If I had indeed and in truth been an angel of light, the effect could scarcely have been more divine. So I share this with you today and we're gonna walk over here to his final resting place. Reverend James Waddell, D.D. Born August 1739. Died September 17th, 1805. And of course, fitting tribute to one of the founding members of this country and the values and the foundation of what makes America great. Motley Patriot, uh, Thanks for tuning in, share and like, let people know we're trying to spread uh, more of the, uh, the magnificent foundations of what is America.